So, principle three, don't review, recall. In the school, we learn things, then take the test. In everyday life, we take the test, then we learn things. And yes, roll. Suppose I made you an offer. I give you twenty uh, dollars. For every word you can remember from a list of Spanish words. The test is in a week. And you have two options. The first one, you can study uh, the list for 10 minutes. Or the second one, you can study a list for 5 minutes and then trade it for a blank sheet of paper and a pencil. If you choose the second option, you can write down whatever you still remember and then you have to give the shit back. Here are results for, from a similarly worded experiment. experiment. Um, in it, students either read the text twice or read it once and wrote down uh, what they remembered. They, they then took a final test five minutes, two days or one week later. Notice how studying twice, uh, that's to say over learning, helps for a few minutes and then screws you in the long run. Oddly enough, a blank sheet of paper will help you much more than additional study time. Than additional stu study time, yeah. Uh, you remember 30... Um, you remember 35% more in a week. Wow, fantastic result. So great. I will take my papers and I will write more. <laughs> so try this one. After reading through your Spanish word list, you can A. Uh, get five more minutes with your word list. B. Get a blank sheet of paper and test yourself. C. Get three blank sheets of paper and test yourself five, uh, sorry, three times. So, um, here are your final recall results one week la later. Study and recall is the best you can do. Yeah, only writing something, you are helping yourself. Cool. It's awesome. So, um... There are three different study, yeah? Study, study, recall, and study or recall at least three times. So, madness. <laughs> yeah, madness. How can uh, taking an identical test three times in a row produce such a large effect? All as it is, this follows rules of common sense. When you study uh, by reading through a list multiple times, you are Practicing reading, not recall. If you want to get better at recalling things or recalling something, you should practice recalling it. Our blank sheet of paper, which could uh, could be replaced by a stack of flashcards, a multiple choice test, or simply trying to remember to yourself is precisely the type of practice we need. It improves our ability to recall uh, by uh, tapping into one of the most fascinating facets of our minds, the interplay of memory and emotion. This is awesome, guys. I think this is the key. So, if there is a key, <laughs> of course, because I, I am not sure. <laughs> Uh, deep within 
uh, brains, a seahorse uh, and a nut are engaged in an intricate chemical dance that allows us to decide what is important and what is forgettable. Yeah. The seahorse shaped structure is known as uh, the hippocampus and it acts as a mental switchboard connecting distanced, distant rations, uh, rations of, our, of the brain and creating a map of those connections. You access this map in order to recall any recent memory. The connected neurons reactivate and you relive your past experience. Over the course of months and years, this networked, uh, this networked neurons lose their dependency on the hippocampus map and take on an inde independent bohemian, uh, bohemian, bohemian, bohemian lifestyle in the uh, outermost layers of, our, of the brain. The curious case of HM. -M. The hippocampus role in memory was discovered relatively recently. In one of the most famous case reports in um, neuropsychology, the case of Henry Malson, in 1953. Melson uh, had this has his uh, had his hippocampus um, hippocampus I don't know how to say it exactly sur uh, sur surgically removed in an attempt to cure his uh, epi epilepsy ep epilepsy 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 I'm not sure how to pronounce. His illness was cured, um, but the surgery, but the surgery left him left him with severe amnesia. He retained most of his old memories, but without his hippocampus, hippocampus, uh, I don't know how to say, uh, he lost his ability to store new ones. Malson uh, could recall uh, his distant past because the map of those memories had spread throughout his brain. In losing his hippocampus, hippocampus uh, he lost his, the ability to make and access new maps and thereby lost his ability to form new memories. His story later became the inspiration for Memento. Uh, Christopher Logan's, uh, Nolan's film uh, about a man with uh, an anterograde, anterograde amnesia in search of his wife's killer. The hippocampus not uh, shaped dance Powder is uh, the amygdala, amygdala uh, and it tells the hippocampus what, uh, what to keep and what to throw out. Uh, it does this by translating our emotions into chemicals causing our adrenal glands to send out bursts of memories of memory enhancing hormones uh, hormones according to the situation. If we encounter emotionally arousing input, look at tiger, oh my arm, then the amygdala um, will uh, strengthen that memory. If not, Look at pencil. I'm hungry. Then it won't. 
This leaves us with a healthy fear of tigers and a healthy disregard for pencils as uh, food items. Interesting. Um, coupled with a uh, coupled with an, the nearby reward centers or in the brain, the amygdala provides the mechanism behind our magical blank sheet of paper. Our emotions are reflexive. Our emotions are reflexive creatures. Uh, they respond to our environment or whether we want them to or not. Well, while we can try to trick our brain into getting excited over, over a list of Spanish words, our brain know whether. Us learning that el dentista means the, te the dentist um, in Spanish gives you uh, goose bumps, your amygdala uh, will not uh, give those memories much uh, of a boost. Um, boost? I'm not sure. El lentista is just uh, not as important as el tigre. You can try to inject amphetamine directly into your amygdala, um, which will work, but that may prove to be more trouble than it's worth. Our blank page, however, changes everything. At the moment, we are um, at the moment where your performance is charged, your brain realizes that uh, it had better get its act in gear. As a result, every memory you recall gets a um, skirt of memory boosting chemicals. Those memories are react reactivated, your amygdala calls your, uh, for hormones, your hippoca uh, hippocampus maps, uh, maps out the involved networks, and your neurons wear tightly, wear tightly together. Um, every time you succeed at recalling, the reward centers in your brain release a chemical reward dopamine uh, into your hippocampus, um, further encouraging long-term memory storage. Um, your blank sheet of paper has created a drug felt, felt uh, memory party in your brain. Your boring word list never stood the chance. Keywords, uh, sorry, key points. So, acts of recall set off. Acts of recall set off an intricate chemical dance in your brain that boots memory retention to maximize. Efficiency, spend most of your time recalling rather than reviewing. Interesting. You will accomplish this goal by creating um, flashcards that test your ability to recall giving word pronunciation or grammatical construction. Coupled with uh, Images and personal collections, these cards will form the foundation of a, a, of a powerful memorization system. Principle 4. Wait, wait, don't tell me. Uh, if it is hard to remember, it will be difficult to forget. Well, <laughs> that was a, a quote by Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> so. Cool. So um, we've uh, all gone through situations, school and work, uh, in which 
we are supposed to memorize something, but rarely uh, those someone tell us how to do it. This is not without good reason. There is no su such a thing as memorizing. We can think, we can repeat, we can recall, we can imagine, we can uh, aren't built to memorize. We aren't built to memorize, yeah. Uh, rather, our brains are designed to think and automatically uh, hold on to what's important. While running away from our friendly neighborhood, neighborhood tiger, we don't think you need to remember this. Tigers are bad, don't forget, they are bad. Uh, we simply run away uh, and our brain remembers for us. And our brain remembers um, for us, yeah. Um, <clears throat> the closest mental action that we have to mem to memorizing is uh, to memorize. I think to memorizing is doesn't sound good for me. Okay, is uh, practicing recall. What was that guy's name? Now we need to investigate precisely what effective recall feels like. Try to, try to recall the foregone words that uh, have shown up so far in this book. Remember some words immediately, immediately uh, perhaps the words that, uh, from the previous, previous section, El Tigre el Lendista. If you keep looking, you'll find a, a, a few more in relatively easy, uh, easy reach. Perhaps Gato is still uh, lurking about. Last hiding in the murky fog of uh, your brain, a few words may reluctantly emerge. Reluctantly emerge. If we were to track your ability to remember each of these words, we will see a curious result. By the next week, you are most likely to forget the words you knew best. Those words that you remember mentally, you are 20% uh, more likely to retain the words that took a little more time, but the words that you uh, that took the most effort to recall, those who had all but forgotten, will etch themselves deeply into your consciousness. You are a uh, 70 5% more likely to remember them in the future and if they spent a, a few moments just out of reach at the top of the tip of your tongue they uh, then you are twice as likely to remember them so what's going on here let's look at the most extreme examples and word that dances dances uh, on the tip of your tongue before you finally recall it, recall it. A word like uh, sorry, a word like this is uh, an incomplete memory. Uh, you have access to fragments of the word, but you can't see the whole picture yet. You can't recall that it starts it starts with um, the letter S or that it's something like a poem or a monologue or that it sounds like 
solipsis or solitaire uh, but you need time to reach the world uh, soliloquy <laughs> I don't know which language is it this is it is um sorry more often than not in these situations we recall uh, Accurate information. Our word does start with letter S. Our brain fly into a wild, almost desperate search for a missing piece of our minds. Um, frantically generating S words and throwing them out. When they don't match what we are looking for. Your amygdala treats these searches as matters of life and death. For surely, uh, if you don't remember the actor who played Matt Damon's therapist in Good Will Hunting, you will leap out of the nearest window. You experience such relief. You experience such relief at finally finding your goal that. The world becomes nearly impossible to forget. How do we take advantage of this? Do we even want to? Um, tricking our minds into a permanent desperate chase after missing words sounds stressful. Doing this a hundred percent a day sounds like a uh, um, it sounds like um, a recipe for early heart failure. Fortunately, uh, fortunately, we don't need to be stressed to remember. We just need to be interested. We will get bored if we spend our days incessantly asking ourselves whether we still remember our friend Edward's name. It's too easy, it's too tedious, and it doesn't work very well. If we wait longer until we are just about to forget, then remembering, remembering Edward's name becomes a stimulating challenge. We are aiming for the point where a dash of difficulty will provide just the right amount of spice and keep the game interesting. If we, uh, if we can find it, if we can find it, we'll get twice as much benefit for our time and uh, will have much more fun in the process. So, key points. Memory tests are most effective when they are challenging. The closer you get to forgetting a word, the more ingrained uh, it will become when you finally remember it. If you can uh, consist, cons consistently test yourself right before you forget, you will double the uh, effect effectiveness of every test.